Hi everyone, I'm Linda Reimer, one of the librarians at the Southeast Sabine County Library. Welcome to Library Connections, our weekly readers, viewers, and listeners advisory video cast. And I just have to say, enjoy this wonderful spring-like weather because it's fantastic after our long fall and winter. Library Connections number 44. This is the Friday, March 12th, 2021 edition of Library Connections. And kicking things off with the top five fiction bestsellers of the week from the New York Times at number one. Life After Death by Sister Solja. In a sequel to The Coldest Winter Ever, Winter Santiago emerges after time served and seeks revenge. At number two, Later by Stephen King. An NYPD detective asks the son of a struggling single mother to use his unnatural ability to track a killer. At number three, Dark Sky by C.J. Box, the 21st book in the Joe Pickett series. The Wyoming game warden becomes a target when taking a tech baron on an elk hunting trip. At number four, appropriately enough, the Four Winds by Kristen Hanna. As dust storms roll during the Great Depression, Elsa must choose between saving the family and farm or heading west. At number five, The Affair by Danelle Steele. A French author's extramarital relationship affects various members of his wife's family. And on to the top five nonfiction bestsellers of the week. At number one, How to Avoid a Climate Disaster by Bill Gates. A prescription for what business, governments, and individuals can do to work towards zero emissions. At number two, Cast by Isabel Wilkerson. The Pulitzer Prize-winning journalist examines aspects of caste systems across civilizations and reveals a rigid hierarchy in America today. At number three, Think Again by Adam Grant, an examination of the cognitive skills of rethinking and unlearning that could be used to adapt to a rapidly changing world. At number four, Just As I Am by Cicely Tyson with Michelle Bruford. The late iconic actress describes how she worked to change perceptions of black women through her career choices. And at number five, Untamed by Glennon Doyle. The activist and public speaker describes her journey of listening to her inner voice. March is Women's History Month, which brings me to our first recommended read of the week. This is a fun nonfiction title. It's called Bookish Broads, Women Who Wrote Themselves Into History, written by Lauren Marino, with illustrations by Alexandra Kilburn a boldly illustrated celebration of literary history's most revolutionary, talented women writers. Women have written some of our most extraordinary literary works while living in societies and cultures that tried to silence them. These women dared to put pen to paper to express the multifaceted female experience. In Bookish Broads, Lauren Marino celebrates fierce, trailblazing female writers, reworking the literary canon that has long failed to recognize the immense contributions of women. 
featuring more than 50 brilliant bookish broads, Marino cleverly illuminates the lives of the greats as well as the literary talents history has wrongfully overlooked. Each intimate portrait delves into one woman's works and is accompanied by vibrant illustrations depicting each literary legend in her element and time. The bookish broads include Jane Austen, Maya Angelou, Margaret Atwood, Semada Ngozi Adichie, and Murasaki Skibu, who invented the novel form in the 10th century. And of course, they are accompanied by many other talented gals whose lives and stories are found in between the pages of this book. And apologies to the author, I think it's pronounced something close to Simonaga Ngozi Aduchi. I've tried, I just can't quite pronounce it. But she's a very talented writer, so I urge you to check out some of her works. And that, of course, is our first recommended read of the week. Our second recommended read for this week is also a very exciting title. I can't wait to read it. It's the next book on my to read list. It is the new Walter Isaacson book. It's called The Code Breaker. The best selling author of Leonardo da Vinci and Steve Jobs returns with a gripping account of how Nobel Prize winner Jennifer Doudna and her colleagues launched a revolution that will allow us to cure diseases, fend off viruses, and have healthier babies. When Jennifer Doudna was in sixth grade, she came home one day to find that her dad had left a paperback titled the double helix on her bed. She put it aside, thinking it was one of those detective tales she loved. When she read it on a rainy Saturday, she discovered she was right, in a way. As she sped through the pages, she became enthralled by the intense drama behind the competition to discover the code of life. And even though her high school counselor told her girls didn't become scientists, she decided she would. Driven by a passion to understand how nature works and to turn discoveries into inventions, she would help to make what the Double Helix's author, James Watson, told her was the most important biological advance since his co-discovery of the structure of DNA. She and her collaborators turned a curiosity of nature into an invention that will transform the human race. An easy to use tool that can edit DNA. Known as CRISPR, it opened a brave new world of medical miracles and moral questions. The development of CRISPR and the race to create vaccines for coronavirus will hasten our transition to the next great innovation revolution. The past half century has been a digital age based on the microchip, computer, and internet. Now we are entering a life science revolution. Children who study digital coding will be joined by those who study genetic code. Should we use our new evolution hacking powers to make us less susceptible to viruses? What a wonderful boon that would be. And what about preventing depression? Hmm, should we allow parents, if they can afford it, to enhance the height or muscles or IQ of their kids? After helping to discover CRISPR, Doudna became a leader in wrestling with these moral issues and with her collaborator, Emmanuel Charpente, won the Nobel Prize in 2020. Her story is a thrilling detective tale that involves the most profound wonders of nature from the origins of life to the very future of our species. 
And that sounds like a really fantastic book, which I have absolutely got to read. Just got to finish the book club book for this week, which is also good. It's Homeland Elegies, but I haven't quite finished it yet. So I've got to finish that first, and then I'll jump right into this one. And our first audiobook recommendation for this week is the new Tanya Rosne novel, Flowers of Darkness, which is read on audiobook form by Sisiska Marvled. From New York Times bestselling author Tanya Rosne, Flowers of Darkness is a riveting and emotionally intense novel set in a near future Paris where a woman confronts past betrayal and present mystery. Author Clarissa Kesteff is struggling to write her next book. She's just snagged a brand new artist residency in an ultra modern apartment with a view of all Paris, a dream for any novelist in search of tranquility. But since moving in, she has had the feeling of being watched. Is there a reason to be paranoid? Or is her distraction and discomfort the result of her husband's recent shocking betrayal? Or is it that her beloved Paris lies altered outside her windows? A city that will never be quite the same, a city with a scar at its center. Stuck inside, in the midst of a sweltering heat wave, Clarissa enlists her beloved granddaughter in her investigation of the mysterious high-tech building, even as she finds herself drawn back into the orbit of her first husband, who is still the one who knows her most intimately and who shares with her past grief that she has never quite let go. Staying true to her favorite themes, the imprint of the place, the weight of secrets, Rosnay weaves an intrigue of thrilling suspense and emotional power. And whether you read it or listen to it, that sounds like a really great book. And moving on to a completely different kind of title, and this one is really kind of out there. It's a what I might call a high-tech comedy type book. It's the new novel, no one is talking about this, written by Patricia Lockwood and read by Kristen Say. Wow, I can't remember the last time I laughed so much reading a book. What an inventive and startling writer. I'm so glad I read this. I really think this book is remarkable, says author David Sedaris, who knows a thing or two about humor. And the New York Times Book Review notes that this book is by a formidably gifted writer and asks the question, is there life after the internet? So having started out with all that, let me tell you a little about the plot. As this urgent genre-defying book opens, a woman who has recently been elevated to prominence for her social media posts travels around the world to meet her adoring fans. She is overwhelmed by navigating the new language and etiquette of what she terms the portal, where she grapples with an unshakable conviction that a vast course of voices is now dictating her thoughts. When existential threats from climate change and economic precariousness to the rise of an unnamed dictator and an epidemic of loneliness begin to loom, she posts her way deeper into the portal's void. An avalanche of images, details, and references accumulate to form a landscape that is post-sense, post-irony, post-everything. Are we in hell? The people of the portal ask themselves. Are we all just going to keep doing this until we die? Suddenly, two texts from her mother pierce the fray. Something has gone wrong, and how soon can you get here? As real life and its stakes collide with the increasingly absurd antics of the portal, the woman confronts a world that seems to contain 
both an abundance of proof that there is goodness, empathy, and justice in the universe, and a deluge of evidence to the contrary. Fragmentary and omniscient, incisive and sincere, no one is talking about this is at once a love letter to the endless scroll and a profound modern meditation on love, language, and human connections from a singular voice in American literature. That is a great book. Check it out. Our first and second streaming recommendations for this week are related. The first one is a classic and the second one is its sequel. So the first is titled Coming to America from 1988, available now through Amazon Prime Video. And I'm sure many of you, if not all of you out there listening, have already seen this film, but I'll just read a little about the plot for those that might have missed it. Coming to America remains a cult classic film that propelled Eddie Murphy to new heights. In the movie, Murphy takes on the role of Prince Akeem, the heir to the throne of the fictional African country Zamunda. When he's given an arranged marriage, Akeem panics, since he would much rather be with someone who loves him for him and not for his status. Terrified of having one of those loveless marriages, Akeem and his best friend flee Zamunda and travel to New York City to find Akeem his perfect match. The movie is an exceptional comedy and is notable for having a star-studded all-black cast. The film went on to become a massive success with critics and fans alike who praised Murphy's performance and the film's clever writing. Okay, so having said that, on to the sequel, which just came out. It's called Coming to America, and the two in this case is the number two, because this is a sequel. And this too is available through Amazon Prime Video. The sequel to the John Landis hit picks up many years after the first film's events, with Akeem serving as Zumunda's newly crowned king. But his ascent to the throne is complicated when his only daughter can't take the crown and he suddenly learns that he has an American son. And so Akeem and his best friend once again travel across an ocean and come to America in hopes of fulfilling Akeem's father's dying wish for Akeem to prepare his son to be Zamunda's crown prince. When he arrives in New York, he discovers Jermaine Fowler Lavelle, a street smart Queens native, and a host of familiar characters, including his mother, played by comedian and former SNL star Leslie Jones, as well as Lavelle's uncle. The sequel also features a host of old and new faces, including the returns of James Earl Jones, John Amos, Louis Anderson, and Shuri Headley as Queen Lisa Jopper. Akeem must also contend with his former arranged wife, Imani Izzy, her brother, General Izzy, as well as several new faces, including the old guards, Kiki Lane, Rick Ross, Tiana Taylor, Nigerian American artists, Rotimi and DeVito, as well as Morgan Freeman. So, there are two films that you can have a great double feature evening with, Coming to America and Coming Number Two to America. And moving from comedies into documentaries, I'm going to recommend a PBS documentary of the late civil rights leader Vernon Jordan. He passed on March 1st. And late last year, of course, before he passed, PBS did a documentary so it's called Vernon Jordan Make It Plain. Explore the life of Vernon Jordan, one of the most influential African-American thought leaders. The film traces Jordan's rise from modest origins to national renown as a distinguished pioneering attorney, businessman, and civil rights leader, and 
as an influential power broker and counselor to American presidents, spanning the era from LBJ to Barack Obama. This is a nice short documentary. It's just a little bit less than an hour. So if you're not familiar with the life of Vernon Jordan or you'd like to know more about him, I recommend you check out the documentary and along with it as a double feature. When they first put the uh, documentary on TV last December, they also had a panel discussion. So it was titled Vernon Jordan, Make It Plain Film Preview and Panel Discussion. You don't need the film preview because you can watch the whole thing. But the panel discussion is interesting. The director of the documentary, Don Porter, sat down with Ken Chenault, the Honorable Hillary Rodham Clinton, and Dr. Henry Louis Gates Jr. for a panel discussion on the life of Vernon Jordan. And it was very interesting and insightful. And that's a little bit longer than the documentary, but I said recommend that you check them both out. And our Hoopla recommendation for this week is the whole first season of the terrific mystery series, Mystery Road. It's a six part season. It's set in Australia and it's really fantastic. So let me tell you a little about it. Emmy and Golden Globe winner, Judy Davis and award winning actor, Aaron Pedersen star in this exquisitely cinematic mystery series set in the Australian outback. When two boys disappear from a remote cattle station, local police sergeant Emma James calls in indigenous detective Jay Swan to help find out what happened. As Emma and Jay butt heads over their conflicting methods, the unexpected arrival of Jay's troubled daughter only inflames the tension. But when their investigation uncovers other crimes that haunt the backwater town, the detectives must look to the past to get justice in the present. Set amid stunning desert scenery of big skies and barren landscapes, this noir crime thriller also stars Deborah Mailman, Tassia Zellar, John Waters, and Aaron McGrath. And this one I have seen, I was riveted. I sat there and watched the whole thing in one day. So it is pretty good. Um, I, Judy Davis is fantastic in this, as is Aaron Pedersen. I was surprised to find after I watched the whole first season that Judy Davis is just in the first season. The series actually follows Aaron Pedersen uh, as he investigates mysteries in different parts of Australia. And the second season was very good too, but boy, that Judy Davis is fantastic. So that's enough send up. I recommend Mystery Road season one, which by the way, you can also get on DVD through StarCat. And our Odd Duck recommendation for this week is related to the Walter Isaacson book, The Codebreakers, that I mentioned earlier. I've discovered on YouTube, there are several neat interviews with Jennifer Doudna and I want to bring them to your attention. They're free and easy to watch. You can bring them up on your computer, smartphone, mobile device, smart TV. So here they are. The first one is a conversation with Dan Rather. It's titled Conversations in Science with Dan Rather and Jennifer Doudna. And if you Google that and put YouTube in the search, as I did, you see at the left side of the screen, you'll see the little thumbnail video come up and then you click the arrowhead pointing to the right and up will come the video. So that's what you see on the right. That one's from February 8th, 2017. And I've also put the direct YouTube address at the bottom of the page, should you rather type that in. Second recommended video is a Q&A between 2020 Nobel Prize winner, Dr. Jennifer Doudna and NIH director, Dr. Francis Collins. And again, I just went into Google and typed in YouTube and a Q&A between 2020 Nobel Prize winner, et cetera, et cetera. You get the idea. And the video comes up and that one's from last October, just after she was awarded the Nobel Prize. And the final video is actually an interview with Walter Isaacson, the author of the book on CRISPR, Jennifer Doudna, gene editing and more. 
it's from the Tim Ferriss show so you could google YouTube Walter Isaacson on CRISPR and probably find this quickly this is really recent this is actually from March 7th 2021 so earlier this week and again the website address is at the bottom if you'd rather type that in and some cool CRISPR videos to learn more about the technology and that's the ad duck for the week have questions about this weekly video cast send an email to me and i'll get back to you my email address is rhymerl at stls.org the library is currently open on mondays and fridays from 9 a.m to 5 p.m on tuesdays and thursdays from 11 a.m to 7 p.m on Saturdays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and we're closed to the public on Wednesdays and Sundays. And that is the end of the new Library Connections content for this week. What follows are a few helpful informational tidbits. The tidbits include directions as to where you can connect with the library online via our website, catalogs, blogs, and social media pages, links to articles used to create this week's video, otherwise known as references, and the library's contact information, which you can also find in any phone book you might have, even if it goes back 10 or 15 years because the library's phone number has been the same for many, many years. Here we see the library's website found at ssclibrary.org. Through the library's website, you can access our calendar of events, click on the catalogs drop down menu to access the web versions of the digital catalog, StarCat, the Hoopla catalog, etc. You can also click the purple text that says Make an Appointment near the top of the page to schedule an appointment for curbside pickup or to use a computer. You don't have to schedule an appointment to use a computer. But right now, for social distancing reasons, we have a limited number of computers available for the public to use. So if you have an important project and you really need to use a computer on a certain date, you might want to let us know so that we make sure that there's a computer available for you. Here we see the library's appointment page. As I mentioned, you click the purple text, make an appointment, and just follow the prompts and you'll be able to make an appointment. StarCat and its companion app Bookmine. By using StarCat, found online at starcat.stls.org or the Bookmine app, you can search for materials available at all libraries within the Southern Tier Library system. You can place holds, you can renew things you have checked out, you can see what you've got checked out, and you can also turn on a remember me list, if you will, that keeps a tally of what specific books you have read or you have checked out anyway if you didn't read them it won't tell you that obviously but if you've checked it out you can turn that feature on and then if you wonder later did i read this book already you'll be able to easily find out if you have questions about that call the library the digital catalog with companion apps libby and overdrive the digital catalog web version is found online stls.overdrive.com and you can check out digital magazines ebooks downloadable audiobooks and a handful of streaming videos through the digital catalog if you have a mobile device you'll use the libby app if your device is newer or the overdrive app if your device is older or if you have a kindle tablet now, if you have a dedicated e-reader, you can also use the digital catalog to read e-books. If you have a Kindle e-reader, you can simply go to whatever title that you'd like to read, check it out, and then you'll be prompted to send it to your Kindle by logging into your Amazon account. If you have a different kind of dedicated e-reader, call the library and ask for instructions because the instructions vary for different dedicated e-readers. Hoopla. The Hoopla catalog features ebooks, comic books, downloadable audiobooks, and streaming videos, including both TV shows and movies. All Hoopla items are available 
for Southeast Demand County library card holders to instantly check out. You can check out a maximum of six titles per month, and that is because the Hoopla catalog, which by the way is found online at hoopladigital.com, but the Hoopla catalog has a different lending model. It's called cost per circ, and that's fancy library East. It simply means that our library, the Southeast Demand County Library, pays each time someone checks something out from the Hoopla catalog. So that's why there's a limit of six items per month. You can also download the Hoopla app to your smart TV or your mobile device. Library blogs, we have five of them and they're cool, but of course I would think that being a library geek. We have the Book Club for Adults blog found at ssclbook.club. And as you might expect, that offers you information on the monthly book club for adults. We have the Corning NY History blog, which features postings each Friday that show photos from our local history archive. Creation Stationery, the Makerspace blog. Story Musings, a blog hosted by the library's resident author and head of adult services, Michelle Wells, which is found at storymusings.blogspot.com and Tech and Book Talk, which is found at ssctech.com, and that features mostly listeners, readers, and viewers' advisory tips. If you have questions about library services during the pandemic, or indeed at any time, or you'd like to make an appointment for curbside pickup, you are welcome to go the traditional route and simply give us a call. The library's telephone number is area code 607, 936-3713. Again, that's 607-936-3713. And of course, our phone number is also easily found online and on our website. Social media. You can connect with the library, read library news, and post questions to the library via social media. The library has pages on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. In relation, each video in this series is available on demand via the library's YouTube channel after it has first been shown on Facebook Live. Additionally, all the videos in this series are posted to the ssctech.com blog, in other words, the Tech and Book Talk blog, each Monday. So you can easily sign up to be notified when a new video is available. And briefly, here are our references of the week. And that's the program for this week. I'll be back next week with a new edition of Library Connections. Have a great day.